So we are in really for a treat. Uh, earlier this afternoon, I met Martina Guzman, really delightful young woman. She tells me she's not that young. She's younger than I am. <laughs> she's not class of 76. But she, we, as we were talking, she said this was coming to Columbia was something she really wasn't sure would work out for her. She really aspired to it, didn't think it could happen. She was 37 years old when she made the decision to come. And she is now truly one of the star graduates. She's class of 2008, a community reporter for WDET, Detroit's public station, where she has been named best individual reporter by the Associated Press of Michigan. This is a person who thought she shouldn't come. It didn't take long. In 2011, her series, The Detroit Berlin Connection, was awarded Best Series by the Michigan Broadcasters Association and first place for Best Investigative Enterprise Reporting from the Associated Press of Michigan. In 2009, she directed the feature documentary, The Accident Accidental Mummies of Guanajuato, and if I have mispronounced that, please come up here and correct me, <laughs> which aired on PBS. You are going to be moved, I know, by Ms. Guzman. Hello, thank you. Um, it is truly an absolute honor to be here. And as Leila said, uh, my name is Martina Guzman and I'm a reporter for WDET, the NPR affiliate in Detroit, Michigan. And I'd like to thank all of you um, for coming and celebrating this because this school had a tremendous and profound impact on me. And I'd like to thank especially Dean Lemon. Um, Meeting you and knowing you was truly transformative and I wanted to let you know that in front of all of these people. <laughs> and when I was asked to speak um, several months ago, I was concerned about what to say and whether I would sound smart or whether I would sound clever and decided that instead of doing that, I would just tell you a little bit about me. And I think it's the best way to get to know some of the students and the best way to know um, what the impact that the alumni have on people that go to this school. And I wanted to tell you about my father. He's uneducated. He is an immigrant from Mexico and moved to Detroit in the 1960s during the heyday of the automobile industry to work in a factory. And he's also illiterate. When he worked there, he was put in situations that he should probably have never been put in, dangerous situations that many immigrants experience, and was in an accident, shattered both discs in his back, and was never able to work again. And my father never had anyone tell his story, never had a voice, never had anyone, you know, sort of look at what was happening in factory conditions and say, oh, we should report on that. And because of that, that inspired me to sort of be that voice and someday tell that story and ultimately um, make it here, make it to Columbia University so that I could hone my skills and become a professional. My father's voice is missing in Detroit and to this day it still is. A few weeks ago I took him for a walk, he's now in his 80s and he was enjoying the sun and he was staring at the trees and he was humming to himself and I caught up to him and wondered what he was humming. And he was humming uh, Frank Sinatra's I Did It My Way in Spanish. <laughs> and I was really proud of him. And, you know, he'd come a long way and he'd made it. And he was talking about the neighborhood and the neighborhood that we'd grown up in and how it had changed. And that neighborhood um, is the bedrock of who I am. And it is the reason why I wanted to come to a school like this. But I still realize that today that his voice is missing and reporters and what we do, it's more important than ever. And there's a lot of voices missing. And I also wanted to tell you about another woman whose name is Angie Johnson because her voice is missing too. And she's a 73 year old black woman 
uh, who worked in a fast food burger place her entire life. And she probably never made more than $10 an hour. And she scrimped and she saved. And she bought a small home and a lot. And as of late, as Detroit is redefining itself, she finds herself being pushed out. And I met her recently and realized that no one else, no one was telling her story either. So like my father, I recommitted to telling those stories of marginalized communities. And I am so proud to be reporting in Detroit. I'm so proud to be telling the stories of this tumultuous, iconic, incredible city that's full of innovation, it's full of industry, it's full of creativity, good and incredibly bad government, corruption, power brokers, and people like Angie and people like my father. And I'm doing it in a really historic time, and I can only do that because of all of you. Because if you've ever given to the alumni fund, if you've ever written a check, if you've ever raised money or asked your fellow journalists to give money, thank you, because I'm here because of that. My education at Columbia really, really, truly transformed my life. And I have huge, huge shoes to fill and enormous steps in which to follow in. And when I watched the video before coming here, I saw people tell their story, people like Christiana Manpour, who said, tell the truth. Howard French, who said, ensure that there is scrutiny. Sheila Coronel, who said, act as a watchdog. And of course, John Quinones, who said, give a voice to the voiceless. I will do exactly that. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much um, for allowing me to follow in those footsteps. Thank you for my scholarship to Columbia University. And I will continue to report on Detroit's epical, epic and radical reinvention. Thank you, Dean Lemon.